Howdy. My name is Nonat, and in case you weren't aware, the Sinclair's Library Kickstarter went live about three or four days ago, and the success has blown our minds. Of our $35,000 funding goal, y'all have already helped us hit 85,000 at the time of this recording. And if you're interested in pledging as well, there is a link in the description that will take you right there. I am here today to assuage some of the skeptics and people who have valid questions regarding the Kickstarter. You know, we're a new company, people have never seen what we can do before, so of course, there are questions. With all the support we've received, it would be a crime not to answer these questions. So, this video is going to be going over all of the serious and some of the more fun questions we've received over the last few days. The first half will be regarding the FAQ, which is also on the Kickstarter, so if you would like to read along, you can click the link and read that there. And then the other half will be answering more interesting questions like, how does this work? Work, what can we expect, etc. So let's jump right in with the first question of how will shipping be handled and how much will it cost? Unfortunately, this is a question that's answer is just as ambiguous now as it was pre-launch. We do not know what the shipping prices will look like for our physical products. Not only will this matter based on the world's economy and how the shipping crisis is going whenever however many months down the line, but it's also going to depend on how many of each physical product we produce. The amount we produce compared to our digital pledges will directly affect shipping costs. We're going to keep you updated as soon as we find anything out about that, but it still could be a few weeks to a few months away when we get more information. But the best way to track it is to pledge or just follow the Kickstarter using the link below and check out the updates page every week or two. Can I get the books for both 5e and Pathfinder 2e? Yes, pretty easily actually. If you pick the lowest pledge to get two PDFs, then during checkout you can click two add-ons to add two more of those PDFs, one for each book, to your pledge or your cart or whatever it's called. In a few weeks after placing your pledge, you'll receive an email from Backerkit asking you to specify which system you want each item. Meaning if you have two PDFs in your pledge of each book, you can make one 5e and one 2e. Currently, the most cost-effective way to get both systems is actually to pledge at the $90 tier. This will get you both books in hardcover and both books in PDF, and so you can make the hardcover one system and the PDF the other. What is the Digital Asset Bundle? This is a bundle of virtual files, namely art. Artwork of pretty much everything. Splash screens, uh, NPCs, art from within the book, all useful for whatever you would want it to be for. Desktop backgrounds. Mainly we have the people in mind who use something like Discord for their games. They don't use a virtual tabletop, but they still want to be able to send their players uh, images of an NPC they meet or a monster they might be fighting. With the Digital Asset Bundle, you'll be able to find any PNG of any character in the Codex, for example, and upload that to your friends if you're playing on a Discord server. It's all also completely spoiler-proof, there's no text on these images, so you can safely send it to your players without worrying about them finding something out. This is a really common one, and I don't blame you. What is the Scroll of Destiny? The Scroll of Destiny is a leather dice carrier. It is a small tube which can hold one full set of dice that rolls up into a scroll, uh, and that scroll can unroll onto a rollable surface on your table. So it carries your dice, you roll it out, you take your dice out, and you already have a soft surface to roll on so it doesn't sound like that. <laughs> If you'd like some more information, check out Only Crits. They are the developer of both our Scroll of Destiny and our Dice of Destiny set. They have some really cool stuff on their website. Can I use both my VTT licenses on the same VTT? Yes, just like when you get the books, Backerkit will send you an email to specify whether you want your key to be for Roll20 or Foundry. If you want to, you can get both of them for Foundry and give one to a friend. This is mainly important for the people who pledge to the Digital Asset Bundle, as that does come with two keys, namely for Roll20 and Foundry, but you could do them both for Roll20 if you so choose. Is there going to be a backer playtest? Yes, but... We don't know exactly when it's going to be. The first thing we're going to do once everything is designed and written is send it to a professional playtesting company. Yes, that's a thing. Before I did this Kickstarter, I didn't know that either. These are paid playtesters who know game balance and know how the system works at a core level and will help us make things as fluid and balanced as possible. From there, it will likely go into a closed beta playtest where certain backers will get to play, but probably not all of them. We're still working out the kinks. And then finally, before release, it will go into an open public playtest where everybody will get a chance to see the content and play it while helping us balance it and correct any issues before it goes live. This is another one of the most common questions. Why is there a VTT option for the Codex as an add-on, 
but not the Almanac. And this is something we are incredibly proud of. The reason the Almanac is not available on Kickstarter is because the Almanac is going to be available completely for free as a Foundry and Roll20 module. Pathfinder 2e has a very generous philosophy when it comes to player options, that they should always be available regardless of if you can afford it or not. That's why Archives of Nethys exists, and the entire Pathfinder ruleset is available on Foundry for free. We respect Paizo for that, and so we are going to be following the same philosophy. All of the player options inside of the Almanac will be available on Roll20, on Foundry, and hopefully on Pathbuilder and Wanderer's Guide completely for free. Yes, we are planning to get Wanderer's Guide and Pathbuilder access to our content. We have not reached out yet, but it is in the works and something we plan to do before the full release. Alright, that's all the super serious FAQ questions. The rest of these are coming from Twitter and Discord. Starting with Twitter, at eQuake asks, how often can we expect production updates? At least once a month. If anything big happens and we make a lot of progress, we will be letting you know. And even if a month goes by and we don't get much done, we are going to let you know. We will tell you, hey, in the month of August, we got this much done. It's not that much, there's nothing to really tell you, but we want to keep you posted. So look forward to at least monthly updates throughout the process. At MJ Ajani asked, who is working on the book? It is these people, because off the top of my head, I know them by like username or discord handle, but I don't know both social media tag and first name off the top of my head, but look at them, there they are. Also, by the time the full Kickstarter has finished and we are working full time on the book, there will be more people than just this list. This is our current team, but with the funding we have received, we will absolutely be bringing on more people, such as a professional 5e converter, as well as a professional editor. We'll release a full detailed staff list once we have everyone on board that we know we'll have. Now on Discord, Ines Moriaku, I don't know if I said that right, asks, uh, will there be STL files available for the minis for people with 3D printers? Possibly. We are still weighing the cost versus the community outcry. The issue with us right now is that our minis are not STL files. They are molded and hand assembled by the company producing them to allow them to be higher quality than a standard 3D printer. Now, if people really want these STL files for these minis, we might be able to get them converted to STL files and then released for public purchase like that, because it's often you know cheaper to print it yourself than to buy it and pay for shipping and whatnot. Uh, we're not sure. It's going to be a little bit of a long process, but if enough people keep asking for it, it will happen. Maris March asks, are any of the NPCs based on people you know? Not necessarily the person themselves, but there may be some characters from campaigns current or past who may be showing up in the book. No one that the audience necessarily would know, but will feel pretty good as the designer to be like, <laughs> I know them. Matsianos asks, is there going to be content slash NPCs for all levels? Yes, especially in the codex with the NPCs, we plan to include NPCs from levels 1 to upwards of 25. In fact, as you go through the book and get from section to section, they will typically get stronger and stronger, with the first section being NPCs, moving on to traveling encounters, lone wolves, heroes, villains, and especially the nemesis section will have all your big bad level 20 NPCs. Blacrana asks, what was the reasoning behind and inspiration for the cursed archetypes? This is something that was one of the first gaps we wanted to fill when thinking about this entire project, and that's why it is the first thing that has been formatted and playtest ready for some specific people. As a design team, we were getting kind of bored and sick of curses being so black and white. You're a werewolf. You're not a werewolf. You're corrupted. You're not corrupted. There should be a lot more to it. It should be a pull and push with the curse. Do you choose to embrace it and gain the power? Fantastic. It will slowly consume you, and you will slowly gain the power, and if you want to remove it, it may be a long time adventure, even a full side quest, to get it removed. Rather than just being a flat curse, and then you cast Remove Curse, it's way more engaging with storytelling if you need to remove it piece by piece, or slowly succumb piece by piece. Asar Doom asks, is there any villain who likes pets and or uses them in fights? Yes, our poster child Liliana has her hell bison, which she rides into battle and fights alongside. And look at this mini. Look at the mini we have for Liliana. This is the kind of quality that we are putting into our minis. They look incredible. 
Nodrick asks, will the Codex and Almanac be available for purchase after the Kickstarter is over? Yes. We don't know if we're going to give it its own website domain or if we're going to put it on the Known At One store. We have not decided yet. But at the very least, the PDF will always be available for purchase from now probably until the end of time, at least if we can't afford to keep the website up or something. Uh, the hardcovers, we will probably keep them up for sale, at least for the foreseeable future. I can imagine at least until Pathfinder 2e stops being a played system. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of resources to keep something up, but it will take some resources to keep it printed, so that'll depend on a variety of reasons, but the PDFs, always available. And those are all the big questions that I think need to be answered here today. If you have any more that is confusing you about Kickstarter or anything you're curious about the project itself, feel free to leave a comment here on YouTube. I will answer as much as I can. We're trying to keep a lot of things spoiler free because there's a lot of stuff that's still in the pre-design conceptual phase, but there's a lot of cool stuff coming and we can't wait to update you guys along the way. So thank you so, so much for your support of Sinclair's library. Let's punch those stretch goals. We are working on the $100,000 stretch goal right now, which is a brand new class being added to the Almanac. So if you would like to see that come to fruition, check out the link in the description and pledge to Sinclair's library. Thank you again. We're blown away. I promise next week we'll get back to normal No Net One's content. Next Monday, I will see you for a more normal video. Thank you again. Have a good one.